listen to what the hell we got to do. See? And that's the whole thing with my power knowledge. Shout out to Claude Anderson. Uh, one so, guy at my job was saying, he was like, we're so intertwined with America now. Like, we've, we're have we so... It's like, we are America. You see what I'm saying? Like, it's not... It's hard to separate it because we're not... It's not like we're this little off community now. It's like we're intertwined with America. So it's like we can't really just pull out like that, I guess. Well, it's not pulling out. It's not really pulling out of America. See, this is the thing. We live here, we here. You know what I'm saying? We were stolen to get here. Well, he was talking about far as like boycotting. Like, we're so intertwined with everything that it's hard to just pull out. It's like, it's not like we can go back to just doing our own thing. Like, back in the day, they had their own businesses. They had their own mom and pop shops. They had their own stuff. That's a cop out. That's a cop out. That's somebody who don't want to do the work. You know what I'm saying? That's mm-hmm. what, how I see it. That's just me. Um, that sounds like a cop out. That sounds like somebody just throwing a whole bunch of excuses. Like, I, oh, but we're, uh, I, where I'm going to get my soap? The black people sell soaps. You just probably have to do, you probably have to wait for it to get to you, but you can get soap from a black company. If black people make toilet paper, you may have to wait to get black toilet paper, and you got to do your research and find out where the black companies that sell toilet paper. Um, you get groceries, where I'm going to get groceries? Well, you got to go get groceries, go get your groceries, but if we boycott that store, don't go to that, that store. We're not saying don't go to none of the stores. We're not doing it. You see, how I'm seeing, from what I'm hearing, how people want to boycott, it's supposed to be flag boycott. Like, we boycott this one. Right, for right. Such and such a day. Oh, we're not and supposed then, to talk about it. We can't say the company. <laughs> don't say it. Oh, yeah, we're supposed to. We, well, I ain't saying the companies, right. but, um, <laughs> you know, um, I'm, 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 I can put it out there, so he got it all on his damn, um, YouTube, so shit. Nobody really, you know, anyway, but we can't just not boycott and just not do nothing and just wait for the hope for the best. Right. That's what we're doing. And that, and then that's kind of my thing too it's like okay so if we don't do it what are we gonna do <laughs> you know like is there another option or something like right is there a list of things that well, we're thinking I'm about doing doing it and I ain't knocking people for saying what they're saying and feeling how they feel it cause it's it's like you're asking me to sacrifice for something that didn't directly happen to me but it still affects me greatly Yes, it hurts me to my core and my every being, but it don't really affect me directly. So why should I have to sacrifice my uh, comfortability? Like, this is the thing. Revolution ain't meant to be comfortable. Right, right. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, it's, it's not going to be comfortable. And it's not going to be easy, neither. Right. You know? Um, it takes yes, some change. It happens. takes some sacrifices. Exactly. If you're really about black pride, black love, black um, economics, black power, um, uh, melanated people united, because and and this, and this and I'm gonna break down what we need before we get. So we need something. We need something before we get to the boycotts. This other thing. What we so need. We work. The first thing we need, we need self love. We don't have self love in the black community. You know what I'm saying? I, I was listening to y'all show uh, last week. Uh, shout out to Will. Um, big up to Will. Um, and the What He Said shows. Y'all please check out my cousin and other show. Um, Will was talking about um, his experience with black companies. And, um, you know, he like, not every black company is good and this and that and the other. And I'm, I, I hear him. I feel him. Because they, they don't be up, up, on, up on it. Like, there's a store, store down the street, and it's a black home, but it's not the nicest black nicest store. You think what I'm saying? Right. But this, it, that, that definitely is true, and we have bought into this whole foundation that white man's water is cleaner. Right. Or, that, so, and find you another black owned store. Shit. Exactly. And then, even, even if you have to go to that, even if you have have to go to them. Go to. Right. You know what I'm saying? Go to it. Stop. Stop coming up with excuses why not to do. 
Right. Um, it was this lady online. I, I think her name is Madam President. Yeah. She said something like that. She was like, why y'all always got to find an excuse not to support your own people business? But y'all are going to these other stores who give y'all bad service all the time, and y'all keep going back there. But as soon as somebody give you bad service at a black store, you want to boycott the damn store. Exactly. Like, why is it so easy for us to boycott each other, but so hard for us to boycott another business? That's anti-black ownership. That's anti-black own yourself, having your own economy. That's anti-yourself. If you do that, like that's what I don't get. I don't get black folks who up on that. Like I don't get that. Now, there's another thing. You know, a lot of these stores, like for instance, uh, 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 say we boycott all these stores, but none of these stores ain't you know putting guns in our heads and killing us on with impunity. But these laws are, and they back the law. They pay for these laws. Right, it trickles and down. Obvious in these laws. Yeah. So. I don't, they're not, they're not innocent by no means. Two, the companies, they will be all right. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Yes, they may close down, they may lose a lot of business, may lose a lot of money, but guess who gained a lot of money and gained a lot of business and gained more opportunity and jobs for their own community, black folks. So what's wrong with that? I don't get it. I don't get it. I don't get it. I don't get why people is against that. And I don't even see that. You know what I'm saying? And I'm not an economy guy. I don't know nothing about... I, I, I'm struggling right now. <laughs> but I'm down with it. You know what I'm saying? I think the people who I talk to, they don't, they're not against it. They just don't think it's... It'll work. Yeah, they just don't think it'll work. They don't think it'll work because they, they know black people ain't united. Yeah, that's probably at the bottom line what it is. And that bottom line, that's really what it is. And that's what I'm saying. First... We need to have unity. We need to have code of conduct. And we need to have, like you said, to kind of try to correct me earlier and say, hey, don't be saying all that. That's code. Of course, we get back on code. We ain't supposed to talk all that. You know what I'm saying? Right. So, it's code of conduct. Um, and, um, and it's not like they don't see text messages. So, that's why I was like, okay. I, mean, I know, right? It's not like T-Mobile. It's like... <laughs> Going to comply and not get a, 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 a hacker glitch. Right. On it. Like, no, these motherfuckers see every fucking thing you're texting. And, and texting, saying on social media. Hell, probably doing too. Yeah. And probably listening. And um, so, so we got to get to a point where we're just united, period. We got to get united, period. We got to have self love for each other. We got to stop this whole beating down each other. So I saw another thing a girl did on Facebook. She was talking about, I'm not protesting for black men because black men oppress me and this whole black feminist bullshit. Oh, yeah. I'm like, I am you. There's no me and there's no you. Right. I'm saying, like, we're all one. I'm a black man, you're a black woman. Black men don't speak out for black women. Lady, you focus on the sorry ass black man that did you fucking wrong and attaching that to all black men. That shit ain't fair and that shit is feminist bullshit that got control over a lot of y'all fucking heads and y'all can get the fuck out of that because we're all getting attacked. Right. You know what exactly. I'm saying? All hands day. on day. You know what I'm saying? We all feel the pain. Exactly. We all are all are on the same. We all feel the same pain. No, I don't know the same pain as a black woman, but a black woman doesn't know the same pain as me. But we both know we've been fucking injured. I know we both hurting. We both fucking hurting. And who the better person to understand my pain is a black woman, because she kind of getting the same kind of blunt of force of the same racism as I, just in a different way. Now, black men, we do need to check ourselves and how we treat our black. Women. You know what I'm saying? We do need to check ourselves. Definitely. And black women, y'all need to check yourselves how y'all treat black men. Y'all need to check yourselves on that as well. Everybody got to take on the responsibility within each other. Within, but that's just on us within our circles. That's code of conduct. We don't need to discuss that around white folks. Right. You know what I'm saying? We I, put yeah. that all out there on social media and bashing black women and bashing black men because that ain't going to do nothing because more confusion and cause more Visceral separation between blacks, people, melanated people. And then you go for Latinos, they're, they're just melanated people with, um, they speak Spanish. So, um, and Spanish speaking, um, 
um, melanated people. And I'm talking about melanated, um, 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 you know, the Caribbean folks and stuff like that. Yeah. Um, so we just need to get back on cold. First, we need self love. And until we have that village, like, I saw a movie, Shawnee. It's an old movie. I love this movie. It's one of my favorite Disney Washington movies. Uh, Devil in the Blue Dress. Yeah, yeah. And at the end scene, like, you see the face. In the whole movie, you see the black community. This back in, this post take place in, like, 1940s, 50s, around that time. And it's, like, very, like, you can tell the camaraderie. Yes, they still have issues within the black community, but they were together. They were like, okay, hey, why we'll this white man up in here? You know what I'm saying? <laughs> like, they were together, right? And at the end, it was he was just outside his uh, porch talking to his friend. And he seen one of his uh, neighbors, on, uh, just a regular neighbor, he just be walking around cutting down motherfucking trees. And he was cutting down another neighbor tree. And he like, man, you know that joker knocked down my tree? And he gonna run over there and chase him off. And he started having a conversation with his neighbor. And then people driving by, he's like, hey, man, what's going on? Hey, man, you better start driving. Slow. You know, they had a family. It was a village. That was the symbolism of village. Ever watched that movie? You have not watched that movie? Why? I explore you. I, ex- I say to you, watch. So you don't think there are any black communities like that today? Yeah. I think it's like that. Um, not just like that, but I think it's kind of like like I go outside, holler at my neighbor, see my neighbor. Um, like the neighbor next door. Um, I think um, she died. Like she is an older lady. She passed away. And you know, I saw my mama and uncle Glenn out there talking to her. Was that lady, is that the same lady who been there for the longest? Yeah, yeah. Okay. The street. Yeah, I know her. Um, that's on the other side of the street. Mm. She been there living there for a long. She just passed away like last week. But they had a funeral last week. Oh, yeah, because I guess you got roots in Cloverdale. So, yeah. Yeah. So, you know, it, there are neighborhoods like that, but we need a village. I, now, I wouldn't say Cloverdale is a village because we got all together here because everybody doing their own thing. And that's really what it is. Everybody doing their own thing, but we need to get back to doing our thing. Right. You know? And I think it can get there. That's why I think the boycott definitely worked and they that we could definitely build that village. But for, in order to build that economic economy, like that means if we get reparations tomorrow, we'll just spend it on bullshit and give it right back to them. But we don't have um, self-love. We have self-love and uh, unity and togetherness in our own uh, community. That shit won't go. And we got to focus on that. And we not got to stop being scared to talk to the little dope boys or the, the thugs or the knuckleheads we gotta be stop being scared to talk to them and really reach out and talk to them. Right. Talk to the crazy thought girl. Talk to everybody. Yeah. Communication. We gotta, we gotta do that. So we can't just sit here and be like, well, I know until I see some X amount of people doing it, then I'll do it. Because I know a lot of people thinking like that. Well, I gotta wait to see if everybody else doing it, then I'm gonna on it. And, you know, but that's just how bandwagon, that's how a lot of people are. But I think... Yeah. I think it's a great thing that we're talking about. We we haven't seriously talked about boycott, and I don't think in my life. No, we have. So I think that's a great first step. Like the fact that we are seriously talking about boycotting, like that is huge. That's a lot. That's a lot. You know, it's not gonna happen over.